Different types of cross-contamination can occur in laboratories, leading to false positive results of the samples analyzed. Although this phenomenon is inherent to microbiological laboratories, this cross-contamination can be relatively controlled by the application of preventive measures. But it is known that the use of collection strains during method quality controls is a factor potentially contributing to this cross-contamination. In the event of a positive results on the sample analyzed, it may be requested to demonstrate that this positive sample is indeed real, which can be difficult and time-consuming. Better control of cross-contamination can also be favored by the use of standardized and ready-to-use collection strains, which would, moreover, be easily identifiable and distinguishable from wild-type target strains. Indeed, the use for quality control of ready-to-use collection strains limits the risk of causing cross-contamination. Moreover, if these collection strains are genetically modified and therefore easily distinguishable from the target strains, it will be easier to confirm that a positive result obtained on a sample does not come from cross-contamination with these collection strains. The objective of this webinar is to explain the context of the collection strains, to present the new Bioball Luminate 2.0 strains and their possible use during controls in food laboratories. In addition, we will discuss about their advantages for better controlling the risk uh, of cross-contamination and facilitating the confirmation of analysis results. This presentation describes the context of the collection strains use, the new Bioball Luminate 2.0 strains, the Bioball Luminate 2.0 uh, possible uses during controls in food laboratories, and the Bioball Luminate 2.0 advantages. The use of collection strains uh, at lab. The ISO 70, uh, 17025 is the standard for laboratories to demonstrate their competence and their ability to produce valid results and to obtain international accreditation and recognition. To perform this demonstration, laboratories are required to use control strains, generally coming from well-known collection of microorganisms such as ATCC, NCTC, etc. For this, they rely on standards such as ISO 11133, describing procedures for testing the performance of culture media, which required spiking with well-calibrated strain suspensions. Calibration can be a low or precise count, for example, when media are specifically for enumeration. They rely also on standards such as ISO 7218 to regularly check the performance of methods, then to guarantee the quality of the laboratory results. This check requires frequent and regular use of well-known positive target strains with an artificial contamination of a food sample. The food sample must be previously known as being negative for the target concerned. They rely also on standards such as ISO 16140 part 4 and 16140 part 3 to validate or verify methods requiring precise artificial contamination. Also on ISO 17043, in particular for the evaluation of laboratory performance during intercomparison tests provided by external organizations or central laboratories corresponding to blind tests for labs to evaluate their methods, technician, etc. This is particularly suitable when labs are accredited. I, it is uh, required by ISO 17025. Now the risk of cross-contamination. A contamination can be defined by an unintentional transfer of microorganism from one place or object to another place or object, 
Contamination in a food production facility can come from various sources, including the deficiency in strict hygiene conditions and the lack of monitoring of quality indicators. More rarely, a contamination due to bacteria from the laboratories of the food industry itself can be detected at the production site. When microorganisms used or grown in the laboratory contaminate, a sample to be tested, this is what we call cross-contamination and which can lead to false positive results. False positive results trigger unnecessary alerts in production sites, which result in an additional workload, a loss of time and therefore of money. And the question that arises is how to be sure positive results are real positives if the same strain is held at the lab culture collection and used regularly for quality control. The impact of cross-contamination. To demonstrate that a positive is really a positive and not due to laboratory contamination, it will be necessary to implement complementary analysis for confirmation to investigate the root cause, to implement an action plan, etc., leading to additional lab workload and cost. Indeed, it may be necessary to delay the release of manufactured stock while waiting for the results of the additional investigation. Investigation leads to an increase in storage cost and sometimes to significant costs linked to product waste when they have, for example, a short expiry date or when the confirmation is not conclusive. What are the solutions to detect a cross-contamination? When there is a suspicion of cross-contamination or it is requested to ensure that the positive obtained is not due to contamination of the laboratory, a certain number of analyses must be carried out, such as retests, or sequencing of the strain isolated. Solutions exist to limit the impact of cross-contamination in the laboratory, for example with the use of specific strains in replacement of classical collection strains for quality controls. This may be strains rarely or never encoded in the types of food tested, but it will still be necessary to confirm again the result is the event of a positive link to this strain. It can also be strains that are detectable and easy to distinguish, distinguish from na real natural contaminations of the food product, like genetically modified strains. So now what are, um, what are bioballs? Bioballs are small freeze-dried water-soluble balls containing a precise number of viable microorganisms. These lyophilized strains are accurate and precise in number of cells. They are also efficient and reliable, meaning that their performance and characteristics are consistent between one batch to another and one viable to another. They are widely used in particular for gross promotion tests and various antimicrobial efficacy test or other quality control or method validations. They are presented in a small glass tube with a secure cap, which is particularly safe and easy to use. They require no time consuming preparation or culture, though limiting the risk of cross-contamination. Bioball are manufactured under a patented citrometry technology and proprietary techniques in order to select and dispense individual cells within a culture and count them into a single droplet. They have a long shelf life and a high recovery rate. Our production site in Australia is accredited as a certified reference material, producer under ISO 17034, by NATA, the National Association of Testing Authorities in Australia, and include a certificate providing each unit's value 
and associated uncertainty, as well as a statement of methodological traceability. The standard uh, buyable range. So the classic buyable range includes more than 100 references available in different presentations. So the single shot presentation in a dose of 30 CFU with a mean between 28 and 33 CFU, meaning generally a standard deviation of 3 CFU or less. The multi-shot uh, 550 presentation in 10 doses of 50 CFU with a mean between 500 and 600 CFU, meaning generally uh, a standard deviation uh, less or equal than 10% of the mean. Multi-shot 10 to the 8 presentation in a dose of 10 to the 8 CFU with a mean between 0.7 and 1.5, um, 10 to the 8, meaning generally a standard deviation of less or equal than 20% of the mean. The high dose 10K presentation in a dose of uh, 10,000 CFU with a mean between 8,000 to 12,000 CFU, meaning generally a standard deviation of 15% of the mean. The strains are typically sourced from the NCTC collection and are perfectly traced. Now what are Biable Luminate 2.0? The Biable Luminate 2.0 benefits from the same characteristics and quality as the classic Biable range. Biable Luminate 2.0 are genetically modified strains thanks to a specific insertion of a GFP green fluorescence protein marker in the chromosome of the host strain. GFP is a protein from a jellyfish to confer a visual phenotype for detection of bacteria. This specific insertion allows Biable Luminate 2.0 to benefit from high stability and fluorescence, which is easy to distinguish from natural contaminants. To guarantee the stability of the genetic modification and fluorescence, a validation up to four passages has been conducted. Despite these genetic modification characteristics, a level of pathogenicity uh, remain the same as the host strains, which is BSL-2. Biobol Luminage, uh, Luminate 2.0 range consists of five strains, including four pathogens amongst the most worrying for laboratories and troublesome for manufacturers. Three gram-negative are already commercially available, Salmonella tifimerium, E. coli 0157H7, which is a non-cytogenic STX negative strain, Chronobacter sakazaki, and two gram positives will be commercially available soon, Listeria monocytogenes 4B and Listeria inocua. The host strains come from the NCTC collection and are also perfectly traced. The strains chosen are registered at the WDCM collection and are also listed in the ISO 11133 standard for performance testing of culture media. Biobol Luminate Range. This Biobol Luminate 2.0 are presented in a single format of 10 vials and a concentration of 100 CFU. This concentration and precision are particularly suitable for daily positive control and verification of methods in order to limit handling and maintain good accuracy as well as optimizing the cost per test. Each Biable Luminate 2.0 contain, contains a highly precise count of 100 CFU with a standard deviation of 50%, 15% of the mean. Therefore, they can be used straight from the freezer or after a simple dilution, making them very easy to use. So Biable Luminate 2.0 is soon to be certified reference material according to ISO 17034 
as with the standard BioBall. This will make BioBall Luminate 2.0 the only quantitative genetically modified CRMs available on the market. So these uh, strains are specifically designed for food applications. So BioBall, like BioBall Luminate 2.0, can be used for all quality and process control, uh, control applications in the food laboratories, such as daily positive control of methods, verification of methods, performance testing of culture media. However, Bioboluminate 2.0 has been specifically designed and evaluated for the first two applications, daily control and verification of methods. A protocol for a positive daily control of detection method is proposed. And for method verification, the protocol 3 from the ISO 16140 part 3 is proposed. In order to guarantee that they will be well and clearly distinguished from non-genetically modified strains, their detection by two techniques was also evaluated for easy and rapid PCR confirmation, invisible sentinel kit running on very flow platform to detect specifically DFP strains was evaluated directly from various enrichment brought of the most sensitive biomerial detection methods. For easy confirmation from isolated colonies on various solid culture media, reading of the fluorescence under UV light was also evaluated. These two confirmation techniques gave the choice to laboratories to use the most appropriate method to confirm that food sample positive results are real contaminations and not cross-contamination from the Bayobor Luminate 2.0 collection strains. Though it is indeed necessary to discontinue use of non-GMM collection strains of the same species for the quality control operations in the same laboratory. So now the food application protocols. Uh, the proposed protocol for positive daily control is similar when using Bioball Luminate 2.0 as when using a standard Bioball or culture. The selected food sample must be tested and confirmed negative for the targeted microorganism prior the inoculation prior to the inoculation with the Bioball Luminate 2.0 control strain. And the following matrices are proposed and were the ones evaluated, so UHT skin milk or milk powder for methods targeting salmonella, listeria and chronobacter, and raw meat of beef for method targeting E. coli 0157H7. Other matrices may be used uh, preferably after checking that they are suitable for this positive control use. Biomerio method were evaluated with alicots of 18 CFU, which enables five shots per variable luminate 2.0. A higher inoculum level can also be used according to the laboratory requirements and their methods. A lower inoculum level will require verification before use. The Bioball Luminate 2.0 is rehydrated and dissolved in 1.1 mL of 14-day rehydration fluid. After 3 minutes of dissolution and stirring for 5 seconds, the suspension can be divided into 5 alicots of 220 microliter and then frozen. At the time of the analysis, the food sample mixed in the diluent or the pre-enrichment broth of the detection method is inoculated with 200 microliter of the toad alicot. Only 200 microliter are removed to leave a small safety volume at the bottom of the tube, and this volume contains 18 CFU, average between uh, 15 to 20 CFU. In the suspension, if the suspension is used immediately. Uh, without frozen, a volume of 200 microliter is directly taken and spiked into uh, the food primary broth. Given that Bioball Luminate 2.0 will soon be recognized as CRM, 
it is not necessary to check the load of the inoculum if all the precautions for the preparation of the suspension have been performed correctly. Protocol for method verification. The protocol for method verification is the protocol 3 from the ISO 16140 part 3 standard. One viable luminate 2.0 of 100 CFU is red rated and dissolved in 9 mL of pepton salt broth. If a standard variable is used, it is, not, it is recommended to use two single shots of 30 CFU and to rehydrate and dissolve uh, them in 3 ml of API NACL medium. As required by the ISO 16140 part 3 standard, a verification of the inoculum load is necessary to determine the volume to be used to artificially contaminate the initial suspension in 7 replicates and to have a load between 3 to 5 See if you.
So we have conducted internal evaluations and these tables present the Biomerieu solutions evaluated with each of the Biobol Luminate 2.0. In order to cover a wide range of methods, the protocol for positive daily control as well as the protocol 3 of ISO 16140 part 3 for method verification have been evaluated on the most sensitive biomerio detection methods. The methods tested include different technologies and different enrichment media. Because we went as far as the confirmation stage, we were also able to assess the fluorescence quality of the strains on several agar media, including those described in biomerio procedures or ISO standards. Now we have also results of internal evaluation for GFP uh, confirmation. Similarly, to assess confirmation using GFP Veriflow, a wide range, wide range of methods have been tested covering numerous enrichments, standardized and proprietary, from which confirmation is directly carried out. The evaluation of GFP Veriflow has also been carried out on isolation agar with success. This made it possible to demonstrate that GFP very flow allows confirmation of a positive sample as soon as the enrichment is complete without waiting for the isolation step corresponding to the confirmation of the method. Now what are the, the benefits of using Biobol Luminate 2.0? The use of genetically modified control strains allows the laboratory to easily confirm positive samples by a specific method, which can be a fluorescence reading of colonies isolated on plates under UV light, or a specifically designed PCR test like the GFP Veriflow. In the event of a negative GFP confirmation on the sample tested, positive, the analysis may be continued until its proper confirmation because we can say that the positive screening test is not due to cross-contamination with the Biobol Luminate 2.0 collection strain. In the event of a positive GFP, confirmation of the sample tested positive, the analysis can be stopped. Indeed, in this case, there was cross-contamination with the collection strains Biobol Luminate 2.0 leading to the positive screening. But since it is not certain that the sample is not also naturally contaminated, it is necessary to redo a GFP confirmation test from the enrichment or from a new subculture of the enrichment or even to repeat the analysis of a new sample. This is to ensure that the sample is not also naturally contaminated. By using Biobol Luminate 2.0 for control process applications, food industries have the possibility to verify that no false positives are released due to cross-contamination. There are some conditions for the use of genetically modified microorganisms. So labs using genetically modified strains must no longer hold and use the non-genetically modified strains equivalent of the same species in the same area for quality control operations. Same rules and precautions as conventional strains should be respected for the use of Biobol Luminate 2.0. If they are not already evaluated, genetically modified uh, microorganisms should be evaluated beforehand to demonstrate that they are suitable for the chosen application. So agreement for the use and handling of genetically modified microorganisms. The use and handling of G genetically modified strains may require, require approval from a competent authority in some countries where legislation exists. This regulation applies to laboratories. Biomirio reminds you that Biobaluminate 2.0 is a range of genetically modified microorganisms and may need to comply with special regulatory requirements for a laboratory contained use in your country. For example, the European Directive 
which is completed by national regulation. In this case, so please refer to your local competent authority to declare or obtain an agreement before use. In order to help laboratories in working with their local authorities to obtain this approval, we have conducted an assessment of these regulations in a large number of countries. We have established a list of countries that have regulations requiring application for authorization. For those who required a procedure, we have also listed the relevant competent authorities. This information is readily available by, via our local support services. To minimize repeat requests, it is recommended to carry, to carry out the procedure for all the five strains of Biobol Luminate 2.0 through the same submission. About ISO standard uh, evolution, so today, the use of genetically modified strains, even if already used by a certain number of laboratories, is not expressly described in particular in normative documents. The ISO 7218, which is currently under revision, will soon introduce the use of distinguishable control strains, taking over the work of an advisory ISO working group on this subject. Similarly, ISO 11123, whose revision process has just begun, should also introduce this notion. So to conclude, uh, the BioBall and BioBall Luminate 2.0 are unique products in their design, precision, accuracy, consistency, and performance. BioBall Luminate 2.0 benefit from a brilliant new concept combining the qualities of BioBall with high quality genetic modification. BioBall Luminate 2.0 can advantageously replace classic collection strains and make it possible to limit the risk of reporting false positive results for these important pathogens. The possible use of two widely evaluated confirmation methods give laboratories the flexibility to quickly and easily confirm the absence of cross-contamination in their samples. The Bioboluminate 2.0 range encompasses these five strains of particular interest, but can also be associated with non-genetically modified Bioball. Easy to use, they have their place in food laboratories, and they make it possible to understand quality control in a new and simple way. Thanks for your attention.